Hey, uh, Jeff with Game Refaction. I'm here at the 2017 Calgary Expo. I am here with artist Tom Grummet. Um, thank you so much for the, the interview. Oh, you're welcome. So you started your career with like the new Titans with George Perez? Pretty much. I did a, a few fill-in things before that point when I first broke into DC, but that was my first regular title. Yep. Then you jumped in the Superman for quite a bit. Uh, yep. The uh, editor of the Titans was also the Superman editor. And the first time I met him face to face, I said, I don't care what it is. It can be a six page backup in an annual or something like that. I have to draw Superman at least once. Mm -hmm. And I got a 10 year gig out of it. Was the the suit and like, especially the, the symbol has changed quite a bit. And sometimes it's been kind of like an artist's kind of like intent on the symbol. Were there, was there certain things about the S that you were doing differently than anybody else was? Not that I'm aware of. Um, the way I the way I tended to think of the S shield was like a was a weird kind of a triangular goldfish bowl with these yellow fish swimming around I can see it. in it. Uh, I, I some guys draw the S as an S. I draw the negative space inside. That's what I've always done yeah. too. So that that might be different, but beyond that, I tried to stay. As close to the S symbol as I recall seeing it when I was young. Was there ever a character like uh, for DC that you always kind of wanted that series regular spot or even like a mini series that you never got to, to actually do? Nope. No. No. Pretty much got it off. I got. I got. I got my Super Bowl with Superman. Um, and you were one of the the kind of like the the brain trust behind the whole death of Superman stuff. Right. So, what was your your overall involvement with it, and how did how was how did this come to pass? Like, what kind of pitch was given to DC where they went yes? Uh, there was there was no pitch. No. Uh, we were act that year. We were actually planning a wedding. Okay. And what uh, the editor used to do is he'd, he'd call what came to be known as our Super Summit. He'd gather all the creative guys together in New York to work out a year's worth of Superman stories over four titles. Yeah. It just, just to keep everything organized and so everyone knew what everyone else was doing because all the stories interconnected. So it was like having a weekly Superman comic book that just the title would be started with uh, Man of Steel, then Superman, then Adventures, then Action, mm -hmm. and then re then repeat. So that year, we were, Lois and Clark were supposed to get married, and we'd done about two days. We were two days into the summit of hashing out how that was going to play out when we got a call from upstairs that the wedding was off. Okay because of, they had just uh, made a deal with ABC to do the Lois and Clark TV show. They didn't want any kind of confusion about, you know, why are they married here and just good friends on A little bit TV of parody between the brands. That kind of thing, yeah. And we were mad. So, and mad enough to say, okay, then we'll just kill them. <laughs> and, uh, started playing around with how that would play out and then double checked it with with upstairs and they were fine with us killing them nice and uh, we didn't think it was that big a deal at the time because Superman had died before you know this was not nothing new as far as we were concerned and we really didn't figure it got that much attention, but it, it went insane. Yeah, there was newspapers and everything. It was probably the first big comic event, I think, to get like a type of mainstream reporting. Yeah, it was a, it was a combination of a slow news day and people actually believing that we were taking Superman away. And what we found out, and what was the most gratifying, is that people really cared about Superman. You know, maybe maybe uh, comics fans didn't, but the world did, mm -hmm. and the world started buying Superman comics because yeah. they were afraid he was going away forever. 
And then you and writer uh, Carl Kessel co-created the the Superboy, the, 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 the new Superboy character. Yep. Um, were there particular traits that you kind of kept with that character in case other writers or artists that were like making their own stories or were there traits? Yeah, like the, a certain like checklist, like he'll do this, he won't do this. Like if there was like guidelines that you set to like that kind of character. Well, yeah, much in the way is if you create any character you create the whole character and this is who he is this is what motivates him this is what he's all about this is how he looks and and we go from there and uh, there were there were some things we wanted him to do and one one of those things was uh, right at the right at the offset one of the first taglines that popped into my head is don't call me Superboy. Mm -hmm. I'm Superman. You know, because he was one of the four different Superman running around that Metropolis. That was like one of the first splash pages when he turns around, it's like that full don't shot. Don't call me Superboy. Uh, he was uh, supposed to be uh, a, a edgier, more self-involved. And, and physically, I wanted him to resemble Clark. Not so much Superman, but Clark. Just so there was that kind of connection. And uh, uh, the costume I designed on a napkin on, on a plane trip back from New York. And then did up a, once I got home, I did up a uh, larger kind of model sheet of what he would look like front, back, and all that kind of thing. I wish I'd kept the napkin, though. Might be worth a dime. Nice. Well, thank you very much. You're most welcome. All right, thank you very much. How was that?